Okay, let's make some bloodstone. Bloody bloody stone. This stuff I think is actually very pretty. It's it's kind of naturally tiled, very good shade of red. I kind of wish you unlocked it earlier so I could build some of the blood altar out of it right off the bat. But at this point, I think other than the runes, I'm not going to be doing much to it. Anyway, speaking of that, I made another set of botanical runes. And I don't quite have the lower layer filled out yet, but I'm cooking up more smooth stone to finish that off. And when I replace these pillars, these redstone blocks for the bloodstone, we should go actually up to tier 5. Because this next layer here, these beacons are the proper thing to have. So, let us do that. Just need to knock all that off. And dupe. And dupe. And dupe. And dupe. And tier five. No. Eh. I think I'll just leave those as bloodstone. They aren't quite as ugly as vanilla glowstone. They're acceptable as they are. So goodbye, redstone blocks. You served well. Now, at this point, we can actually make the next tier of the Master Blood Orb. We, we can... We can make the Master Blood Orb. That'll take 40,000 blood. I think I could do that. Like with my with my uh, Thaumaturge's Razor. And maybe a couple more Runes of Sacrifice and stuff like that. But... Uh, I don't know. What's it going to take to do Dusk and Dawn? That's just going to take Tier 4 and a Block of Coal. That's really easy. And once we have those and some Tier 4... For slates, yes. Yeah, once we have those, we can upgrade the Ritual Diviner. Because the Ritual Diviner, just in its default state, is not able to replace all the types of runes. It cannot place Dusk runes. And I think there's a fourth type, Dawn, that we're going to need after that. Yes, that will need the Tier 6 for. And we are going to need to be able to place Dusk Runes to do something that I want to do right now. So let's do that real quick. Let's just go grab a block of coal. Actually, I think we're going to need to grab two, won't we? Click and then you. Yeah, we're going to need to grab two blocks of coal and then I'm just going to need to cook up some more slates. So that'll be just a moment. I will be RB. So I'm going to be heading back to the end because I need I need Ender Air for something. But I want to make the way there and back a little bit easier. I don't want that portal freaking killing me all the time. So I'm going to make something to help me out a little bit. By infusing these ender pearls with a little bit of blood, I get these teleposition focuses. And I can use these to make teleposers. Seems obvious enough, right? Well, let me actually set a filter for them and I'll just put the rest of these pearls in. Well, what teleposers do is they allow me to spend a little bit of blood in my network in order to teleport from somewhere. And they even work across dimensions. Oh yeah. So I can take these teleposers here and you saw that, uh, well these focuses here, and I can use them to make those teleposer blocks. And I'm gonna need more of those focuses. That's why I put the rest of it in. And I think it was just, yeah, six per and then two ender pearls. So I need 12 of that. And I need four of that. Because, yes, I will need two teleposers. One and two. 
And let's see if those other foci are done with their thing yet. There they are. I can just take those. No. I'm going to take two with me. And I'm also going to take some buttons. Because these things need a redstone signal in order to work. So. Okay, let me just put this right here. Well, yeah, let's actually put it up on the surface because it needs that button on the side. I could make something special with red crystal, but I'm not going to do it for something that I'm probably only going to use like once or twice. So, I take my teleposition focus and I shift right, no, I just right click on it. And see, now it is bound to dimension zero at these coordinates and I am the owner. And I'm just going to keep that in a special little place for right now. And let's jump into the end. Out on the other end of the end, we can then, let's put this right by the dragon portal. If I can find where that is. Yeah, screw it. Let's just put it right here. So I take this, I take my other blank one. Well, first, just to reduce confusion, we put the home focus in there. And now this teleposer is bound to that teleposer back home. So I take this. It's bound to dimension one in these coordinates. So I can get on this end and zoop. No? Why no? Does the other end have to be chunk loaded? I have enough blood. It only costs like a thousand blood. Okay, that's weird. I will go and um, I will go and find the portal, and I will be RB. Okay, let's try this again. I've got this end chunk loaded, and I put in the Ender focus. So first of all, let's see if I can teleport to there. No, and also apparently redstone signals don't really work with world anchors. So let's just move that a little bit. So let's try chunk loading the other end. Okay, both ends chunk loaded. That did it. Okay, so that is a lesson that you need to learn. Apparently, in order to use teleposers, both ends need to be chunk loaded. Um, I'm not sure if I really like that with world anchors being the only shit. <laughs> being the only chunk loaders in the game. Because, I mean, if it was spot loaders, yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's not a huge deal. Neither of these are in a really active area, so it's okay. It doesn't take up much memory. Anyway, end rare. Yeah, that stacks. Okay. Yep, just right click with bottles, you get end rare. Anyway, what I wanted this ender air for is for the flugel tiara. Just need a little bit of that, some of the uh, Gaia Spirit feathers and stuff. And the Flugel Tiara will allow me to have creative level flight. The problem is, it only gives you creative level flight 
it, it has a little recharging bar that charges over time, a little energy bar. Blurry vision, warp effect, lasts only a couple of seconds, not a huge deal. What? What? But, but it just, <sighs> anyway, yeah, um, it, it gives you creative level flight for a little while, but I find the problem, you know what, if it's not going to be working, I'm just going to take the world anchors away. But I find the problem with it is that it takes up your amulet slot. And I really like having Vanity's Emptiness on all the time. So I think I'm going to treat it more like a tool, where I will only use it very occasionally. I find that the Witchery Broom is good enough for when I need flight for transiting difficult areas. And I would pretty much just use the Flugel Tiara for when I need to do construction. And I am actually going to need it for a little bit of construction here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that was, um, that was not a productive use of teleposers, damn it. I know they work across dimensions. You saw it work across dimensions that one time. But it didn't want to keep on keeping on, so... I think that mostly I would want to use these things for um, later on when we start setting up millionaire villages. I'll set those up quite a ways away from the base and I'll have teleposers going to them. And those ruins that we have that we can get the maps for, I might set up teleposers near to them and use that generation thing I told you about to farm them for fat loot. But didn't I have two teleposers? What happened? Uh, I think the end portal might be stealing stuff from me. I think I might have stolen my elven knife. Mm. Stupid thieving end portal. Yeah, I'll just keep the focus. Well, I have more rune grinding to do. I will be Barbie. Flugel Tiara. I don't think it has any visual... Yeah. Doesn't show up on your head. Oh, well. Yes, yeah, so you see that little... Those little wing bars over down there? Yeah. So if I double jump, doop. Mm. This is actually, this feels quite a lot faster than the broom. But you see, it ticks down and fairly quickly. Oh yes, and I can press shift, I believe. No? Is it just sprint? I could have sworn there was... Oh, maybe I need to assign a proper sprint button instead of just double tapping like I usually do. And... And you can see the problem of me taking off Vanity's Emptiness right away. Yeah. If I were to keep that on permanently, I would have to build proper walls and completely light the entire base. And I'm not even sure if I've built the extent of the base just yet, so I don't think I want to do that. So yeah, Vanity's Emptiness is going to be staying on, the, and the Flugel Tiara will be strictly for construction during daytime era. Day daytime hours. Ugh. Ugh, my head is pounding. Speaking of, I believe I may have enough slabs now. Let's take a look. Eh, that's not a complete stack. Oh well, that's that's actually a fairly fast fix. Let's just top up the blued. We should be gaining more blued than that. Whoa, why is my health so low? 
Oh, because the freaking end portals. Ugh. It sets you to default health, and it doesn't seem to know to regen you past that for a little while. Actually, it doesn't seem to know to regen you past that at all. Doop, doop. There we go. Let's do it with the others, just to be sure. Doop, 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 doop. Yeah, that freaking end portal. It is... It is not friendly. But apparently... Jimmy? Jimmy? Jimmy has escaped. No, he hasn't. No. Jimmy. Why do you run away, Jimmy? I haven't enslaved you yet. I need to, apparently. Let me go make another lead. Come here, Jimmy. Now, you stay right here. No escaping. You know what happens when you escape, Jimmy. You get sent to the punishment room. At least when the kind people aren't watching. That might uh, get me in trouble for abuse. <laughs> That's better. So apparently, I don't know. Apparently the amount of LP it gives has something to do with hearts? Because it was giving less LP before I fixed the hearts. That was freaky. Anyway, how much did it need? It just needed like five. Actually, I'll just, yeah, okay. Okay. And then, to form that into ritual stones, I am going to need a stack of obsidian. Just need to take that, like that, and then it goes like that, and like, th like that. I said, like that. There. Okay. Oh, shoot. I completely forgot to make the dusk runes. That's okay. That should be real quick. Okay. This time, for real, for real, I have everything that I need. I have my ritual diviner all dusked up. And I am going to set it for Ritual of the Well of Suffering. Oh, isn't that a lovely sounding name? Now, over here, you notice I set up something called an Arcane Levitator from Thomcraft to give me easy access beneath my altar. You notice that just by standing above it, I kind of bop up and down. And if I hold down shift, magic elevator. And in case you were wondering, yeah, uh, you see in the blinky blinky, I have lit this place up. So, now I'm going to take my Fugal Tiara. Going to put that on, get me all pretty. Now, this ritual goes one, two, mm -hmm. one, two, spaces beneath the center of the altar, and it needs to recharge, of course. But I think I can just jump up and get it. Uh, yep. And yep, you only need to hit it once, and there it goes. Is that all 36? That is all 36. But I'm not going to kick that on just yet, because there's another ritual that I would like to set up. I think I have 44 stones. Yeah. 44 stones, except I need to make another master ritual stone. 
That's okay. That just requires four ritual stones. And this is actually what you need the magician's blood orb for. Um, the ritual stones themselves can be made with apprentice stones, but they're kind of useless on their own without a master stone. There is kind of a, a low craft, a low tech thing you can do that just uses baseline stones, but um, we'll get into that later. It's kind of a specialist thing. Anyway, we just get on down here. And this is going to go directly beneath this. And I am going to set it to Ritual of Regeneration. It's the very next one. They're meant to work together. Did I hit the right one? No, I did not. Damn. Okay. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. I should have just flown up and got it. BRB. Okay, I got all that trouble sorted. It turns out that the thing that the wiki specifies is for an altar that is just the rune stones. This regeneration ritual has a couple blocks that go up higher and they uh, they would be sticking up in my stairwells. So I had to move it down another block lower. Anyway, what we have here is a couple of rituals, the Well of Suffering and a Ritual of Regeneration. The Well of Suffering will inflict damage on nearby monsters, and every time it does, I will gain a little bit of blood in my altar. The Ritual of Regeneration does exactly like it sounds like, and casts regeneration on things. And Thaumcraft flesh golems made from rotten flesh have a naturally fast regenerate. Together with the regen ritual, they will grow their health back faster than they lose it. So, I can set these guys down in just a little line. And I am going to put down these cloud blocks. They will halfway sink into them. I have found that if you do this, uh, because once I activate the ritual, you'll see they kind of jump in place whenever they take damage. And they kind of need this to lock them in place so that they they get stuck and they don't end up jumping all around. And that can sometimes cause bugs. Anyway, our five golems that will be fueling all of our magic with their perpetual suffering, I have given appropriate names. You. You get time in the punishment room. And you, oh, you are such a limited editor, editor. You're good for what you are, but God, you could do so much better. You, do you have any idea what you've put me through, making me wait on all of the upload? Oh, the speed is so shit. And you, you know what you did. Wait, didn't I make a fifth one? Shoot, I lost a golem. Damn it. Okay. Well, let us just kick this thing on. So, first let's kick on the, the Ritual of Regeneration. We just take our activation crystal, and if we have enough blood in our network, it should... Zoop! A rush of energy flows through the Ritual. Now, that costs a fair whack of power just to do. Yeah, we are just about empty, actually. But I don't think it'll drain any blood until we actually have to start spending it. So I can spend a moment or two refilling my blood orb. Because I'm going to need another huge whack of power to turn on the Well of Suffering. Okay, here we go. Let us come up and boop. Rush of energy. Now we should see them. And yep. We see that the regen is more or less keeping up. Hmm. 
I can't tell if they have regen or not because I have potion particles disabled. That is annoying. I suppose I, I removed sprinkles for vanilla because um, cause Optifine can do it. So potion particles on. Yep, they've all got regen. Now get out of here. So, they will be sitting here in perpetual agony. And every time they take damage, I gain a little bit of blood. Here, let me take this thing off so we can... It's not very fast right now. But I can make it faster by adding more golems. And I can make it faster by building... Runes of Sacrifice. Sacrifice, Sacrifice. Sacrifice. That's just gold and reinforced slates, yeah. So, I think that is enough for today. I was hoping to get more done with Applied Energistics today, but I kind of got distracted by the Blood Magic, because I find Blood Magic to be very, very fun. But you can see we have completely filled out all the baseline runes of our altar. All that we need to make this a fully tier 6 altar is something special that we need to do a very advanced ritual to acquire. To put on those pillars. We have pretty much all the basics done and we have automatic blood production. Uh, yes. Blood. Can I? Can I? Yeah, camera. There we go. Blood. Yes. Come to me, sweet blood. And now I can just leave my orb in there, and my blood network will gradually fill up. And I can soup up this blood production, and I can use it to run perpetual rituals. Like I could have Ritual of the Green Grove to increase plant growth speed. And I can have rituals that produce lava and water. And I can have rituals that do this and that. I could have rituals that give me creative flight in a small area. There's tons and tons of stuff I can do. And I can have those lava stones that we saw. I can fuel all my furnaces with the power of blood. I can run my industry on the suffering of mindless husks. Wow. Um, we've pretty much got the world back into condition before the fall. Yeah. Job is finished. Huh. Well, see you next time.